The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 27th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, well, I'd love to hear from you by email. Send it off to Steve at TFN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den. Well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 17. The S&P's up 21. The NASDAQ 100's up 180. The Russell is flat. The semis are up 110. The trendies are down 118. Gold is off 25 bucks. Silver's off 60 pennies. Lights recruit is up a buck 40. Natural gas is off 11 cents. 30 year treasury down a buck and uh, one point and 14 ticks. Trading out at 124.24. Now lead the charge to the upside. You've got Align Technologies, a $60 move or 17% LAM research. $56 move, nearly 9%. KLA Corp up 7% or 32 bucks. Asimil Holdings, 31 bucks, 4%. Mercado Libre, $23. That's a 2% move. To the downside, it is your Chipotle leading the charge off $192. That is a 9% move. O'Reilly Automotive down nearly 4% or 37. Granger Worldwide down 29 or nearly 4%. S&P Global down 7% or 30 bucks. Belmont Industries, $22 move. That's nearly an 8% move to the downside. So let's begin like we have in the past. Let's begin with market breadth. Where are we at on the short-term time frame charts? Here is the NQ. You are 10 above, 50 below. So that is a negative market breadth reading. For the S&P 500, we are 104 above, 239 below. So 30-minute time frame charts, we'll go take a look at those, are in negative market breadth territory. How about the other four, the 60, the 240, the daily, and the weekly? When we take a look at the NASDAQ, they are bullish for each of those time frames. For the S&P 500, we're dealing with the same thing. So just the 30-minute charts right now that have that negative market breadth. What's going to be really key to be watching and observing today? I would have to say it's going to be these numbers in the ES Mini, 4609.25. Why? Because a close above that will negate a, a TD9 count or a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there, and that would suggest higher price. The level that the NQ has to close above to negate its signal is 1606275. However, a close above 15681 at day's end increases. You can't see my charts. That's weird. Not know what to tell you. Duffy, they're up on the and they're and they're streaming out there. Maybe reboot. Um, here, what is likely to occur is a uh, close by fifteen six eighty one odds favor a move up to fifteen nine sixty seven for the Dow Equity Future contract. The number is going to be thirty five six ninety three. That's its TD nine count top, and the Rhodes Mintum indicator top inside the Russell is set at two thousand seven. In each of those areas, our tests have been tested. Um, so far at this stage here, the only one that is a successful test being trained above resistance is the ES Mini. But we'll have to dig down into its charts to see if there's any kind of bottom signal. Well, Steve, why don't we just go ahead and do that? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that right now. Let's look at our multi time frame charts for the ES Mini. We'll look at this for the uh, equity future contracts. In the upper left-hand corner, momentarily, you'll see the ES Mini, the daily time frame. 
And you'll see that roads meant to indicator signal that uh, confirmed back here on July the 20th. If we take a look at the five hour chart, the five hour chart ha is in the process of potentially forming a roads meant to indicator top. I say potentially because it's 1111 and this candle session does not close till 2 p.m. But if it does form that, bearish reversal candle and price does close below its oscillator and change line that would suggest a move to 4590 4572 4563 or even 4545 won't really know until 2 p.m if we take a look at the four hour time frame chart this candle here is going to close at 2 p.m as well also a potential roads meant to indicator top also testing oscillator and change line support. If price closes below that, its next area of support would be 4587, below that between the range of 4563 to 4569. The two hour chart has already confirmed a TD nine count top. So let's take a look at it. Here you've got the TD nine count top that completed. It completed as we came into the 10 o'clock session. And now we have price below its oscillator and change line. That suggests to you and I price is gunning for its next level of support. So for the ES mini, that level is going to be 4605. 4605 is the top of the daily profile. If price gets inside there, then it's the bullish structured area of that profile between 4588 and 4594 that become the price targets out there. That's coming from the two hour time frame. The one hour time frame confirmed a sell the D point pattern. Um, its level of support is uh, way down here at 45. I don't, where is uh? No, it's below support. It looks like there was a new profile that formed. It's below support. If I take a look at a 30-minute time frame, I don't really have a topping pattern per se, but we do have is price of below support. Next level of support for the ES Mini is going to be 45.94. 45.94. 15 minute time frame chart is going for 46.07. 10 minute time frame chart is going to complete a TD9 count at 11.20. Uh, that could so watch that pattern <coughs> if the low doesn't get taken out you should at least see some type of intraday counter trend move that would take you up to the 46 20 uh, 46 18 area is where price would likely run to so that's a review of the es mini let's try to get a feel and how would we summarize this how i would summarize this is at first be watching the 10 minute time frame chart see what takes place after 11 20 um, and I'd be watching 4608.25 as well. Those areas get taken out. Odds favor 4605. Below that, the I would go to the two-hour time frame chart for its signals, 4588 to 4594. Now let's go take a look at the NQ out here. The NQ, give me a moment just to pull this up. We know the NQ formed a roads to indicator top. Price uh, today found resistance at its oscillator and change line. That's up around the 15872 mark. We take a look at the five hour time frame chart. There's no topping signal here. That suggests price wants to move higher. And the two hour and the four hour time frame chart, there's no topping signal there either. It does appear that the two hour time frame chart may form a TD nine count top. The reason I say may is because at 2 p.m., price has to close above 1576250 or at 15785. So I don't know if that pattern is going to unfold or not. If we take a look at the one hour time frame chart, we do have an existing top. It was a TD9 count top and prices testing support. So this is going to be the most helpful chart, at least at this stage here for the NQ. And that says because this is bullish profile support. If we see a close below 15769, that's going to then signal move back to 15697. But as we speak, 1114 in the morning, support is being tested. Support has held. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Let's get to a couple of questions. Just a couple have come in, so let's go and get to those. Uh, the first one, I've got to kind of do this in reverse order. Dennis was asking about the short-term outlook for the queues out there. I think I answered that question, but let me be real specific here. We're taking a look at the, and I'm not taking a look at the QQQ chart. You know that. I'm taking a look at the NQ chart because this is going to provide us with all the data that we need here. So in, in the case of the NQ, Got that 60 minute time frame chart. That's the only one really that I can rely upon right now for any kind of accurate information. We know we have a confirmed TD9 count top. And we also know that price has pulled back to test support. That support level, you see, oh, I see I've got a host chat. So let me see what's going on here. If there's a problem with the system, give me a moment. Oh, we've got a caller. Give me a second here. So let me just finish this out here. So with regard to the NQ, price is sitting at support. It's just, and you're looking, asking about short term. I would say on a short term basis, if price on a 60 minute basis is able to close by 15,796, uh, price makes a run for its TD9 count high out there. So that's the very short term look that we have. If the ES, the YM, and the Russell 2000 take out those resistance levels that I shared with you earlier, then I'm going to come back here and say, with regard to the NQ, it's likely going to take out its top two. Not a guarantee, but likely. And then what I would say, this is the last five years for the NQ, so I'm showing the seasonal pattern out here. If those get tops get taken out, then the seasonal structure just, just structure within the last uh, five years, on average, has moved up into the uh, early September or late August time frame. That's the last five years. If we take a look at the last 10 years, prices moved up into about the middle of August. So that's would be that would be my... Uh, shorter, longer term prognosis if in fact those topping patterns inside the indices begin to fail. Now, much different pattern than say the last 37 years. The last 37 years says the top that we see that's already taken place should take us lower into the uh, September, October uh, type uh, time frame out there. So that answers that question. I hope that answers your question there, Dennis. Now let's go to our caller and that is going to be Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing great, and I wanted to thank you for taking the time to share your photos with us about your trip to oh. Egypt and overseas. It's really interesting to me. I'd, I'd, uh, well, thanks. I, 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 uh, uh, thanks for that. Boy, I've got hours and hours. Um, it was such a cool trip to go back so far 
in you know in history. So uh, very cool. Um, I know that you didn't call just to talk about that. You wanted to take a look at the GDX, which could be forming an A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, but tell me what you're calling about, how I can best help you. Okay, Steve, I think that we're inching our way into the gap that occurred from uh, yes. July 12 to July 11. And as of right now, it looks like it gets a lot less volume, but we're not at the end of the day yet. But uh, what's your opinion of we think we could see a good trail bottom in the DX? So, yeah, great question, and, and I'm watching this, and I'm watching this because I'm long uh, metals, I'm long uh, mining out here. And what I'm watching specifically is going to be the swing point right now from uh, July the 24th. And that low is going to be really important at day's end. That low is 3101. If we close below it, we are, we're going to have – so the volume on that uh, candle session was 10.8 million. Today, we've already done 8.8 .8 million. So we know we are thrusting lower into that breakout session that you were talking about that had 44 million shares to the upside. So there's a possibility that the low from July 24th will hold. If price closes above 3101, I don't even care what the volume is. I mean, I do care. But as long as price holds that, then there would not be an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. If price closes one penny – and it's really got to be more than a penny. But if it does close one penny below 3101, then that would trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection, I give you the approximate out here, is going to be approximately about uh, 30 bucks, 29.96 or thereabouts. So if price does close below that 3101, then I think the answer to your question would be we would uh, the the uh, the buy would be a confirmation of a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern. And if price starts moving down in, you know, completely completely fills that gap, it still could be targeting the swing point or the high of the swing point from June the 30th. When I look at a weekly time frame chart out here, we have a sell the D point. We have a wave number seven pattern, but we also have a TD nine count bottom. And that TD nine count bottom has led to a consolidation with inside its profile. So the consolidation pattern here, Mike, runs from 29.12 up to 32.40. On a week monthly time frame, price is just simply pulling back and testing support. That's at 29.56. So everything still looks good volume wise so to speak but there is the threat mm -hmm. of a potential a to b equals cd to the downside and if we get that that would be the next buy signal if we don't get that in this area holds do we get a buy signal you know for that i'd say we'd probably have to go more back to the gold charts and see what's going on there and look for some type of bottom signal does that answer your question or what additional questions do you have no that's that's pretty much it steve uh, you, you pretty much told us the important thing if we get a close below the 3101 we're likely to set up the abc down so you always have anyway. really good you know resistance and support levels and that's very helpful to me so perfect perfect you know if, it, if we do get below that 3101 that could be setting up a uh, well I, I i guess i can't say i was going to say a tiger girtley but the reality is it can't because then we'd be passing the b point with volume so so forget that last comment i i, I wish i could hit the rewind tape i, I just did but uh, so so that's where we're at 3101 is going to be the key level for us to watch and observe today all right mike all right thank you very much you bet. You have a great day, and thanks so much for holding a little extra hold there as I didn't see the call. And we'll, we'll hopefully hear back from Mike in Orm Beach sometime here in the near future. Let's go take a look at the next request that came out here. This is from John in Milwaukee. And John wanted to take a look at Procter & Gamble. And his question is, is it a buy or where is the buy for a one-year hold? John, as we take a look at the daily time frame charts here for PG, we see that yesterday was a completed TD9 count top. So where's the buy? Now, even though it's got a completed TD9 count top, its overall signal is neutral. The reason it's neutral is because price is above the top of its daily profile, so it's above resistance there. It's also above a green oscillator and change line. The green oscillator and change line is bullish. When we're above that, it says we have a rising price oscillator above zero. So the overall signal at the moment is neutral. That doesn't mean that price won't pull back to test support. It should. And support here is between the range of 152.04 and 152.53. Now, the real key level as a potential buy for you if the move lower is only a counter trend move, then support should be at 151.37. That would be the area, John, that I would be looking for. 
Now, of course, you'd like to see price pulling back with lighter volume, lighter than what? I'd say lighter than at least the candle says from July 21st that had 9.9 .9 million shares. On a weekly time frame, all we have is price moving into its bearish structured sell zone. It's a decent sell zone. Uh, it ranges from 153.53 to 158.11. On a monthly basis, Procter & Gamble is trading above its green oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. But it needs to close on Monday above 158.208 in order to make, in order for that statement to have really any substance to it. Because if we do get that close, its signal is it wants to longer term move higher. But you got to have that, uh, you know, you're, you're in a turbulent zone between the 153 and 158 area. And the daily's got a uh, TD9 count. So let's do this here. Watch the pullback, further pullback, and let's watch. Let's see what happens should price get towards that 151.37 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back to this red green and take a look at AQST for Dan in the Tiger's Den. Attention traders. Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power-packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought-after newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets, and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees, and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN. Educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the stock chart here for Acoustive Therapeutics. AQST is the ticker symbol. Beautiful chart patterns out here. Forms a TD9 count top. It does this on the trading session of uh, May the 12th. 
That ends up leading to an A to B equals CD to the downside that forms with a TD9 count and by the D point, a gigantic hammer, Dano, from uh, June the uh, 29th out there. So that's your real key level of support, which was also really right at its uh, breakout level of a buck 29. Now what price is doing here is price is trading above the top of its daily profile. Uh, so you want to see two consecutive closes above a buck 70. If you get that, that says that price should run higher. Now I say should because what price needs to first do on a weekly basis is take out that green oscillator and change line. And that's printed out at 177, let's call it 176, but as price moves up, that'll move up just a tad. So what you really need to see here for this to start moving to the upside is a close above 177. That will get it back inside its weekly profile. And then that would be signaling to and I move towards the 207 to the 216 area. The weekly chart is nice because you are trading above profile. You have been for three months out there. So the month, no problem here with the monthly, no problem with the daily. The issue is really overcoming that green oscillator unchanged line out there. So if you can do that, Dan, that uh, should continue to move higher out there. This is going to be day number three of consecutive moves higher out there. If we take a look at what typically happens after a three-bar move out here, what do we see? Well, we pretty much see, for the most part, we pretty much see pullbacks out here. So I would be preparing for some type of retracement to begin, uh, you know, tomorrow, Monday, something along those lines out there. But you know the resistance level, and that's going to be the key area for you to continue to watch and observe. So best of luck there. Fletch wants to take a look at Schlumberger. SLB is a ticker symbol. So let's pull that up on our screen. Schlumberger has triggered a Rogemintum indicator signal. Now, a lower high today will confirm a... A, uh, a wave number seven, that's a letter G top. So as long as price does not spike above 5822 Fletch, you're going to have a wave seven top. Does that mean it's going to move lower? No, really the signal right now is neutral. It's neutral because price is traded above the top of its profile and its green oscillator and change line. But if it loses 57.62, gets back below that, then it will have lost its momentum and likely signal move between the two, the 54.83 to 55.76 zone. The weekly time frame chart will confirm a TD9 count top this week and complete that pattern next week. That says watch the daily time frame for your signals out there. Wave 7 could be it. Bearish reversal candle would generate a rose momentum indicator top. But again, it's the top of the profile on that green oscillator and change line fletch that are really the key levels to watch. The monthly chart looks beautiful. When I say beautiful, I mean because price is trading above the top of its monthly profile at 56.91. You'd love to see it close above that come Monday. But the weekly says caution. The daily says caution out there. So the eyes need to shift to the daily to continue to watch it. But right now, its overall signal is neutral, and I go neutral to bullish. So, Fletch, I hope that helps you out with regard to Schlumberger, and best of luck to you on that trade. Peter from Park City wants to take a look at one of his favorite things to trade, and that is the euro. So let's pull up the charts here for the euro, see what they're doing on a monthly basis. If we pull this back, the euro is just dealing with a trend line that it's trying to get back into. So that's what it's dealing with. It's struggling to do that. On a weekly basis, price right now is dealing with its oscillator and change line. It's trying to hold that level of support. On a daily time frame, price is pulling back. You've got bar number seven. Perhaps on a daily time frame, we form a TD9 count bottom. Now, that couldn't occur until tomorrow to next Tuesday out there. So I'd be on the watch for that as one possibility. The 30-minute time frame chart does not have a bottoming signal, but you could get a TD9 count bottom. Price still needs to spike the low of the day. And we need to do that within the next hour. So it's 11.30. Bar number eight is at 12. By 1 o'clock, price would have to spike below. Let me give you that number that's got a spike below. It would have to spike below 1.0983. If it does that, you could be on a 30-minute time frame getting a short-term bottoming signal. It's the only time frame that I see that has a potential bottoming signal out there. Um, so, Peter, I hope that helps you out with regard to the uh, euro. If not, right back, and I'll try to get you the information that you're looking for. John inside the Tiger's Den. Let's go back to those. Let me close this out. Just free up a few resources out here. Let's uh, let's go to the next question, which is from John inside the Tiger's Den. And John wants to look at Carvana, CVNA. So let's get to that actual chart out here. And Carvana right now pulling back, formed that TD9 count top. So I had a beautiful day a uh, week ago plus. Big move to the upside. Uh, that 
generated or confirmed a TDI account top. Pattern was completed the following day. Now we have price pulling back. It failed to hold its first level of support, the oscillator and change line. So now we're below that. The next level of support is the top of its profile, 4040. If, in fact, Carvana, CVNA, is bullish, where we'll find support, well, could find support at 4040. But the real level, the real key level there, John, is going to be at 3616. That's where a counter trend move would typically find support. Now, on the weekly time frame, price negated its TD nine count top. So weekly, this says it wants to run higher. On a monthly time frame, price is above profile, it's oscillator and change line. It's also saying it wants to run higher. So I'd be looking for a bottom pattern on the daily time frame. It's not there just yet. It could be. Uh, because the low of the day so far, I, I, low of the day so far is a 40.67. The top of that profile, 40.40. I would say more likely than not, I'd be watching that 35.16 level. That doesn't come into effect until you get below, close below 40.40 out there. So that's what I would be looking for. I hope that that helps you out as well. I think we've got another request or two. I just didn't get that. So let's see here, MU and TJX. Okay. So let's uh, get over to that area and let's start building those charts. So let's take a look at Micron. MU is a ticker symbol. This is for Bob in Spokane. And you also want TJX. Let me just type that in so I make sure I get that. And then that uh, long-term hold. Got it. Um, okay, perfect. So with regard to Micron, Micron negated his TD9 count uh, top yesterday. So that pattern went by the wayside. Um, it's above profile. Uh, it is trading into resistance, which is the weekly profile. That's at 71.42 out there. You're trading above monthly. So the key area of resistance for Micron, MU is a ticker symbol, is going to be that 71.42. If price can close above 71.42, if it can do that tomorrow, that's going to signal that it wants to go test the uh, swing point from June the 2nd, the sun of weekly base that we're looking at, that high at 74.77. Now, there was 86 million shares that uh, traded on that week. So far this week, we are at 43 million shares. So we're coming into that swing point with lighter volume. Nonetheless, a close above 67.92 still because I've closed inside the swing point still suggest you could get up to that high but that suggestion that would have to come by overtaking that 7142 level so 7142 is the magic number out there today's going to be the third consecutive move to the upside micron typically pulls back i believe it typically pulls back after a three bar move three bar consecutive move but let's take a look at it and the answer is yeah it loves bar number three i do see a few fours and twos out there but it loves three bar moves so i would expect that micron is going to form a short-term top by tomorrow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back when we get back. We're going to take a look at TJX, but I would love some additional requests as well. Steve at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still in the mixed bag out here. You've got the Adao up 60, the S&P's up 24, NASDAQ 100's up 216, Russell's off 3, Semis are up 123, Tranny's down 53 out there. We're going to take a little time and take a look at TJX. Take a look at this chart here. It said it's all-time highs. Um, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, we don't see any kind of uh, topping pattern. Uh, there is a signal for Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal, but that's it. You're trading above profile. Uh, TJX, is, TJX is suggesting it wants to continue to move higher. Now, if it's going to continue to move higher, what it needs to overcome is going to need to overcome a potential TD9 count top. That could form between this week and two weeks out. So long time and another couple of weeks out there. It is bullish. You also have wave number seven, but that needs a lower high in order to uh, confirm that pattern out there. You're above profile, you're above the oscillator and change line. The weekly time frame is bullish. On a daily time frame, the daily time frame has an A to B equals CD pattern out here. And that A to B equals CD pattern would get, uh, I sell the D point pattern, would get confirmed. Here's what, here's what it looks like. I'll just draw it in. It's more than a one to one A to B equals CD, but there's your A to B. And I'll just simply move this over to the C point. And then there's a the retracement. There's a C point. It gets beyond the one to one. If you do get a bearish engulfing or, well, bearish reversal candle right now, it's a bearish engulfing candle. That will then go ahead and confirm a sell the D point pattern. All right. But its signal would still be neutral. Why? Because price is above profile. Price would be above its oscillator and change line. Now I don't know where it's at at day's end. If price closed below 86.94, this is TJX. It will have lost its momentum on a daily time frame. It will have generated a topping pattern. And its first level of support will have failed. That would then suggest move back to its second level of support, and that would be at 8601. 8433 is another area of support, and 8313, those are the weekly oscillator and change line and the monthly top of its profile. But overall, TJX looks very strong, but it may be getting ready for a bit of a, a pullback out there. It all depends upon today's candle. So I hope that that helps you out. Whoever you were, I apologize, I didn't write down who made that request. But I do appreciate it. There was a request for the SMHs. I forgot to write down who made that request. Sorry about that. And the SMHs, having a nice day out here, up 120 points, 3%. But all it's really doing is consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's after forming a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That being said, 
Price is currently traded above its green oscillator and change line, which is 158.74. That increases the odds that price will make its way up to resistance, and that is at 160.79. And if price closes above 160.79, it will negate its daily Rose momentum indicator top. And if it closes above that level tomorrow, it'll negate its TD9 count for the week. And it'll have done that in one week. And that tells us about a strong upward momentum move would be underway for that specific time frame. And when we look at the monthly chart, really any close above 159.35, we're at 159.84 right now. 159, make sure that's the high, 159.35, 159.41. A close above 159.41 negates the monthly uh, uh, sell signal, roads to indicator signal that formed way back in uh, January of 2022. And that would then suggest a significant move higher out there. Well, if that's the case, let me come here and take a look at the seasonal charts here for the SMHs. Let's try to get a feel for whether or not there's something here that we aren't looking at. So let's pull up the SMHs and let's look at multiple time frames. Let's start with the short one. So the shortest I can do is a five year. And on a five year time frame, so over the last five years, the SMHs don't typically peak out until about the first week in August. That's a five year deal. We take a look at the last 10 years. The last 10 years, price doesn't typically uh, um, uh, top out until Monday, this coming Monday. We take the last 15 years. Last 15 years, same kind of thing, not until Monday. And lastly, if we take a look at the last 23 years, the last 23 years says a top that forms, that typically forms around uh, the middle of July, gets tested around the end of July out there. So that's the seasonal pattern inside of the SMHs. But I would say Monday, the real key number to be watching is going to be uh, the high from November of 2021 that's 159.49, 159.41. We're trading above it right now. You close above that, it negates that uh, resistance level. It suggests to move higher. Yes, 160.79 is another key area to be watching here, which we will do. And that's on the SMHs. I believe there was a yep, there was a request to go take a look at MUX out there. MUX at McEwen Mining, I believe it is MUX, the ticker symbol, trading out right now at about eight dollars and fifty-one cents. It is trading with inside its daily profile. Now it is a bear structured profile. The price is trading below eight sixty-six, which is the green oscillator and change line. So it has definitely lost its momentum, or at least it's lost its momentum as of eleven forty-seven in the morning. This would then suggest that a close below eight sixty-six, because it's a bear structured profile, that MUX would pull back to the $8 level. $8 is the bottom of that profile. We can see on a weekly time frame that price formed a TD9 count bottom, and that took price right up to TD9 count breakdown resistance at the 911 area. So on a weekly basis, you really need to see a close above 911 to say that this wants to go back and test its most recent highs from back in April. On a monthly basis, you have a new profile that is forming. That new profile is bearish in structure with the resistance level being the top at 932, the center is 729, and the bottom at 458. We won't really worry about those because it's really the daily chart that we're focused in on right now. That daily did form a TD9 count top. And again, most likely, what the uh, McEwen Mining MUX is doing is going to go make a run for that support level down at the $8 level. So, McGuppy, I hope that helps you out. You Could you please look at MUX looking for support levels, long-term position looking to add? So I think at this stage here, it's got to be that 8, not that 817 can't hold the support, which is the top of the weekly profile. So that really becomes your range. What you'd love to see then is you'd love to see some kind of short-term time frame chart as prices approaching that area. You'd love to see some type of short-term time frame chart, 30 minute, 65 minute, that shows you some type of bottoming pattern out there. That's not what we have as we speak right now. In fact, the 30 minute chart is suggesting more like we're gonna get to 816 than it's suggesting anything else. So hope that helps you out, McGuppy. Thanks much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. I don't have any other questions that I know of. Let's take a quick peek here. Let me just make sure. Yeah, and that's been a quiet day on the email front. So where do we want to go to next? Where do we want to go to next? We, well, we covered the GDX, but we didn't cover gold, I believe. So um, or if we did, then Stevie's having a senior moment, and I will apologize well, before I actually pull up the gold charts. But now we got the gold charts, so now that we're here, we're committed. What do we see when we're looking at gold? Well, first, we've we've rolled over into the December contract. 
What we know about gold is its key level of resistance is of 2022.90. That number is going to change just a tad. That happens to be that weekly oscillator and change line. If you look at the daily time frame, I guess we did take a look at gold. We saw that uh, price was pulling back to a key area of support. I guess we did that during the update. Yeah, that was during the update. And what price was doing was testing the bottom of its daily profile and the center of its weekly profile. And that's really between the range of 1980-80 to 1994-90. So, so far that area is held. If that area fails, odds favor price pulling back to its breakout level of 1954-30. The 30-minute chart does not have a bottoming signal, nor does the 60-minute, nor does the 120-minute, nor does the 240, and nor does the five-hour time frame chart. So it's really gonna be all about the support of the daily profile. 19 83. That's the number. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the stock charts here for a Census Surgical, ASXC, having just a horrible day. It's a stock that was selling for about 50 cents yesterday, uh, woke up and uh, fell out of bed, and it's now trading at uh, 31 pennies out here. Uh, I don't have any good news. Um, price is certainly targeting its uh, weekly Rosemont indicator bottom from back on December 30th. Now, that swing point had volume of 6 million shares. Uh, you're already at 11 million shares for the day. Forget about the week. The week is already 13 million shares. So it's pulling back into a swing point that has a low of 28 cents. That 28 cents is going to get tagged. It may get taken out. 
it gets taken out. Where does it go to? I say where it would go to is somewhere between zero and 28 cents. So uh, you've got massive volume coming out of this thing. This, uh, this looks like a little stinker. And I don't know what additional help that I can be uh, for you on ASXX, ASXC, but it doesn't look good. Uh, thank you for the request, though. Much appreciated. Um, Steve, something for the end of the week to review correlation gold and the dollar, especially the dollar has turned. Sure, we can go take a look at the, that chart. We can uh, put that together. I think we can put that together relatively quick. So let's go over to Stevie's black background charts. This is for Mr. Bill. We take a look at the correlation. So we got gold up top. We got silver below. That was correlation between those two instruments. Let's uh, change this out. Let's get this to the U.S. dollar index. That'll pop up here momentarily or try to. DX. And then one more spot that I've got to change that, that's at the bottom panel. And here we'll just simply take a look at the correlation between the direction of the U.S. dollar, DX, and uh, Goldilocks. This is set at a five-day time frame. And the bars at the bottom, the bars at the bottom uh, tell you, when the bars are below zero, I should say, tells you about the inverse correlation, higher dollar, lower gold. And when bars are above, tells you they're both moving in the same direction. So we can certainly say that for the most part out here, yes, we've got that inverse relationship that, for, that mostly is in place out there. And that's how we end the show today. Folks, stay tuned. You've got great programming lined up for you. I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. But first, you have a terrific Thursday. Be safe out there, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.